Now that we've placed a transition between a couple of clips, uh, and we've also placed a filter on a clip and been able to manipulate that filter, what if we need to do an insert edit? What if we need to place another scene on top of another one? In other words, I want to be able to uh, change my scene very quickly. This is a very simple thing to do. I want to take another clip and I'm going to drag it up into my player window. I'm going to very quickly set an in and then set an out point just so I can bring something down and show you how this is done. Once I have the in and out, because of the fact that I've already got my sound the way I want it, I'm going to select this orange A right here, or deselect it rather, so I can strip the audio off of it. And then I'm going to pull the scene down to the desired position on my second video track. And as you can see, with the down on the timeline, if I, sit, if I play this, you'll see the original scene, it will cut to my second scene, and then once again, cut back to the original scene. The reason that this is very effective is because now if I need to nudge the clip and move it to a little bit different position, it's very simple to do because nothing was done to the original clip and all the original footage is still sitting underneath it. So I'm free to move it around all I want to without having to go through a lot of work to be able to keep the original clip footage there. Now that we've gone through how to work with basics of video and, and being able to do insert edits and transitions and filters, now I'd like to show you what, how we would manipulate the audio. Uh, there are many times that we need to be able to raise and lower different audio levels even inside of a clip. And this is a fairly simple thing to do. If I want to go down to track one and manipulate this first clip that's right here, I select a little arrow that's just to the left of the track name 1A. And as you can see, the track expands out and you can see the waveform. To manipulate the waveform, all I have to do is select the volume pan button and you'll see that a little red line here is now has two little nodes at each end. To raise or lower a, a section of it is very simple. I just left click the mouse button at the desired point where I want to start to raise it. I right click where I want it to come back down normally and then I just add a couple of more nodes and just either pull them up or pull them down to the desired level and now I've manipulated the audio and have it where I'd like it to be. Well, now that we've finished our editing, it's time to output it to a, the file format or back out to a deck. So, to output your project once it's finished is fairly simple. All we have to do is underneath the recorder window is select the red export button. I select it and I have four choices. I have print to tape, print to file, print the tape with time code display or print a file with time code display. These last two options basically create a file or print out to your deck, but it also has a time code on it so that if you have to get approval, it's easy to do for people to give you the, the time code for your changes. We are going to go ahead and select print to file. Once I print a file, you'll see that the Procoder Express, or excuse me, the export window uh, comes up with all of my options in it. I am going to be selecting uh, for our tutorial today the Canopus Procoder Express for Edius Wizard. Once it's highlighted, I, I want to make sure that export between in and out is unchecked because I want the whole project to be exported, and I select OK. It takes just a minute for it to come up. But Procoder Express is a kind of a subset of the full Pro, Canopus Procoder program, which has basically won many awards for, uh, for its conversions. Once I'm inside of it, I can use the Procoder Express ed, for EDIUS Wizard, or I can select a generic target, or if I've already been working and I have the previous uh, setting that I wanted before, I can select it. Let's go ahead and use the Procoder Express EDIUS Wizard. After I select it and select Next, you'll notice that I have several options here that I can use. Web video, CD-ROM video, video CD, all the way down to DVD and high definition. When I select the one that I would uh, desire, I just select Next again, and then it will go through and ask me several questions about what I want to do with this video. In high definition, I have three different choices, MPEG-2, Canopus HQ, or Windows Media. I'm going to go ahead and select MPEG-2, select Next, and as you can see, once again, each time I make a selection, the wizard knows, okay, he's selected uh, MPEG-2, what different types of flavors are there and which one would he want to use. 
And as you can see here, there's a whole list of different high definition MPEG-2. I'm going to go ahead and pick HDV mode 2 and select next. And when I come to this point, it's going to ask me, where do I want to save this file? If I select the browser little button right here, I can go into my computer and tell it where I want it to go. Also, it should say, how should it be named? Should I use the source file name? Or do I want to specify a different name for this particular file? And then when I have the destination and I have the file name the way I want it, I select Next. And it's at this point where you can get very, very technical if you want to. Uh, you can accept everything that Canopus has done for you, or what you can do is select the Advanced Output Settings. And as you can see now, you have total and complete control over this format. You can pick and choose the exact settings that the way you want them to be so that your project comes out to the desired outcome. Once I've selected all these options, I select Close and then Convert. And once I select Convert, you'll see that a uh, progress bar comes up that shows me both my audio and video. Once it reaches 100%, my project's finished.